Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now AMD's integrated graphics have traditionally been reserved for G-series desktop APUs and mobile processors. Whether it's the Radeon graphics found as part of the once top tier 5700G or the 780M graphics within the flagship 8700G, it's been amazing to see how far iGPUs have progressed. Gaming without a separate graphics card has gone from possible to somewhat enjoyable. But let's talk about the Ryzen 5 7600X here. Along with other 7000 series desktop chips, this too has an iGPU, but don't get too excited. It's got just two RDNA2 compute units with 128 cores and a clock speed of 2200 MHz. It does have two RT cores, so ray tracing is supported, but ultimately the graphics are here for display purposes, sort of like Intel's early HD graphics. They're there for the sake of an output. Or so most people would say. What's to stop us from firing up some games? Absolutely nothing. Say you've bought one of these and haven't quite saved up enough for your dream GPU just yet. Can the Radeon graphics inside this capable 6-core chip tide you over until then? Well... Let's start with Cyberpunk 2077, not the best example of a game you want to try and play with this iGPU, and of course we need the lowest settings. I've also selected FSR 2.1 with Ultra Performance Mode because in a lot of cases we're going to need this too, and in games that don't support any form of upscaling I've just dropped the native resolution. Thankfully though here we can enable FSR 2.1 Ultra Performance for an average of 31 frames per second, so I guess these graphics aren't as bad as some people may say. Uh, that is if you like looking through what looks like some sort of Vaseline filter on the screen because even with the sharpness turned up a little bit, it doesn't really look that good and it's going to be a problem for your eyeballs after a while I'm sure. The percentile lows weren't actually too bad either though, coming in at 24 and 22 frames per second respectively. We should also cover ray tracing briefly here because this is the first and last time I'll do so in this video. Cyberpunk 2077 with the same settings and RT set to Ultra. Yeah, I didn't even bother with a benchmark result here because you can see how it performs absolutely atrociously is the answer. So no need for an actual definitive benchmark, so to speak, but you can see um, that it's best left off. I jumped into Starfield next. Again, not an ideal game for this iGPU, to be fair, but I wanted to get these challenging AAA releases out of the way, first of all, to give you some context, I guess. The lowest settings here with FSR 3 and 50% resolution scaling for 13 frames per second, an unlucky 13 frames per second. At least the percentile lows were very consistent at 11 and 10 respectively, um, so it was consistently bad, and I guess it's got something going for it, right? GTA 5 next, and this is definitely playable with plus 30 FPS, almost 60 in fact at 1080p, well, 51 frames per second. Uh, the lowest settings also chosen here, as well as FXAA for our anti-aliasing solution. The 1% low was 43 and the 0.1% number was 41, so it was very consistent in if you're happy with plus 30 frames per second, you don't really want 60 or you don't want to aim for it, then you could definitely turn a few settings up. The lowest settings here is basically the normal settings and the detail sliders were also set to their respective minimum. This is definitely more than playable and it reminds me of the PlayStation 3 slash Xbox 360 experience, albeit without the uh, frame rate here. So yeah, not too bad considering that these graphics aren't meant to be gamed on, so to speak. Next up we have Forza Horizon 5, 1080p with a very low preset and FXAA. Now in mind I had 30 plus FPS across the test suite today, I didn't really want to aim for 60 because most of the time it would require too much of a visual sacrifice, so I thought if we can get at least 30 on this iGPU then so be it. Here 1080p with a very low preset, FXAA on for 40 frames per second. The low settings did incur more dips below 30 frames per second, so I thought it was best left at very low here where we also saw pretty consistent percentile lows basically 35 for both the 1% and 0.1% figure I'm also using 32 gigs of 6400 megahertz dual channel RAM as well for those wondering and I've set the dedicated VRAM amount in the BIOS to 8 gigs for the GPU so we're basically left with 24 gigs and 8 gigs of system reserved uh, dedicated towards the VRAM. Some say it doesn't make a difference, you can just leave it at auto or whatever but in my experience I've actually noticed that it does slightly, I could be wrong, could just be all in my head but from what I've seen 
it does seem to, but maybe I'll do a test in the future to see whether or not I'm not just making that up. Baldur's Gate 3 next, 1080p with the lowest settings and FSR 2.2 Ultra Performance. Now, you might be thinking, why not go for 720p here? And I did, but this actually gives us a better result than native 720p. We could enable 720p and FSR, but that's going to look horrendous, be totally uh, blurry, and it's not going to make as much of a difference as you may think. I think this is sort of, it's not a fast paced FPS game, put it this way. So 27 frames per second on average wasn't too sad here. A 1% low of 21 was also, mm, it's getting worse, but the 0.1% low of 13 does indicate a few dips and drops. Still not bad for an integrated graphic solution that is in no way advertised as a gaming solution though. Elden Ring next 720p here, no upscaling in game, so 720p with the lowest settings for 39. 900p is going to give you a slightly worse result and 1080p is out of the question for plus 30 fps so you're best off with 720p here at the lowest settings for 39 frames per second especially to account for some of the dips that you'll see as you can see the one percent frame rate here was 29.6 or 30 as I always round things up and the 0.1 percent number was six so definitely not without its problems is elden ring on this 7600x i gpu Games like Counter-Strike 2, or should I say Counter-Strike 2, because you can't really say games like Counter-Strike 2, I guess, because, you know, every game is different performance-wise. Anyway, lowest settings, FSR set to quality for 70 frames per second. Now, with FSR off, we actually saw 59.8, so basically 60 frames per second, but there were more significant dips and drops, so I thought we might as well enable some form of FSR. I think it uses FSR 1.0, though, because it does drop the visual quality quite a bit. That's why I didn't really use any more sort of aggressive forms of FSR here. It still looks better than if you were to turn it down to native 900 or 720p though. So uh, some of you may want to do that, whether or not FSR impacts latency more significantly or not, and may put you off in the long run on an online competitive game like this. Well, it's up to you, but I found that these settings were sort of the sweet spot for a mix of visuals and performance in CS2 here. Apex Legends surprised me, low textures here, not very low, just low with everything else set to lowest, and a 60 FPS dynamic res. Now I let the game sort of choose the resolution in order to try and keep at least 60 frames per second, and we came away with 63 on average, which wasn't too bad. It didn't look too bad either. The 1% low was 41, and the 0.1% low was 34. There will be some noticeable dips and drops, perhaps if there's smoke effects on screen or a few enemy players, it's gonna tank the frame rate a little bit, but considering what we're working with, not too bad. For Fortnite, I went with performance mode and the lowest settings with 80% 3D resolution. We could have kept 100% 3D res and we would have seen at least 60 frames per second, but again, the dips and drops would have been more significant here. And there are still some areas of the game that will dip below 60 frames per second, even with performance mode here and the lowest settings with this cut down 3D res. Here though, definitely playable. So if you're waiting for that new GPU to arrive and you wanna give the integrated 7600X or any other 7000 series chip iGPU a go because it's all the same, I think, across all of them, then you're gonna be fine in Fortnite. Finally, then we have Red Dead Redemption 2. I chose 720p. This does have FSR, but it doesn't work that well in my experience, especially not on these APUs. So instead of enabling FSR, I just went with 720p native with medium textures, everything else at lowest and FXAA. This gave us 31 frames per second. Think of Red Dead 2 reimagined as a early PS3 title and that's what you are gonna end up with here. 31 FPS on average with a 1% low of 26 and a 0.1% low of 23. All in all, these graphics probably perform worse than the ones you'd find on the older 3400G, for example, maybe even the old Vega 3 graphics on the 3000G. If that CPU wasn't so weak, then uh, the iGPU would probably outperform this, but maybe that's a comparison for another day as well. As for the 7600X graphics though, I don't think they're as bad as some reviewers made out at the time. It's taken me a long while to test them. I've not had much experience with 7000 series chips as a whole, to be honest, not the desktop range anyway. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below, leave your thoughts below. I like to read through as many as I can and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.